pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny Episode 3. Today we're going to chat with Cheyenne Dalton, make a prank call to my dad, talk about the medieval industry's 360 vertical foregrip, and highlight a company called Sacrifice MFG. Today I'm joined with my best friend, Lacey Lane, Sean Heron from We Like Shooting, I'm Ava Flanell, and right now we're tasting the Rockies, and you guys are listening to Gun Funny. Welcome to the show, everyone. Lacey, how are you doing? Good. You have any plans for this weekend? I do. We're having a barbecue. Oh. What and are your plans? Well, I thought I was invited to the barbecue. Oh, that's right. Um, what would you like me to bring? Um, can you... I, I could... I mean, honestly, like anything that requires a microwave, I can make... Um, like, I can make bomb-ass baked eggs? potatoes. How about eggs? I tried that in the microwave. It didn't work as well. I thought you got hard-boiled eggs in the microwave, but... <clears throat> that's okay. It, My mother-in-law is bringing the eggs, so um, could you just bring paper plates and napkins? Okay. I think I could do that. Sure. <laughs> that seems well with it. Well, well within your capabilities. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'll bring that. Sure. All right. All right yeah. Cool. Sean, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking me. Really? Are you doing well? Great. <laughs> okay. Because you look like you're going to have a breakdown. Well, I can't find my beer. That's because oh. it's... Oh. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Taste of the Rockies. I feel like I'm poor drinking this. Mm. <laughs> Um, in our defense, though, it was the only thing that was in your refrigerator, so I guess next time we'll bring our own beer. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'll bring the napkins, the plates, and the beer. How about that? I like that. That's perfect, yeah, as that, long as you're not cooking anything. That's that's how you become the life of the party right there. Yeah. Okay, cool. I yeah. got it. I'm, right. I'm about to become uh, MVP of this barbecue. All right. It sounds good. So um, I do want to apologize to my listeners um, that I haven't, I haven't uh, posted any any episodes lately I'm probably about two weeks behind and I was going to last week but as a lot of you guys know my dad was recently robbed and um, uh, it's been well it's been like five days now so I guess I can give some details but basically um, I'm trying to think like where do I even start where do I even talk about such a piece of shit story (laughs) Uh, start at the end uh, the end. All or right. Just well, in the middle and go to the end. Yeah. So we we ended up. We actually we caught the people. Um, there was like four or five people total. It was obviously an inside job because nobody in their right mind would rob my dad. He's known as the most armed man in America. Um, they did steal guns, and which at the end of the day, like, why would anybody? Why would anyone steal guns? Like, I for one, I I don't like anyone. Who steals, period. I think it's, you know, if you want something, go out, get a job, freaking work for it. But you know that they're dumb if they're going to steal guns because it's not like stealing anything else. If you get caught stealing guns, it is going to be a federal crime. So they're looking at, you know, when they're prosecuted, they're looking at quite a bit of time. Good. Yeah. I'm not complaining about it. Um, But after he was robbed Sunday night, uh, I went there that night and we were there with like police officers and law or police officers and ATF and all them for for quite a while. And then this week we've been doing inventory, trying to figure out what all they stole. And it's just been it's kind of been a little bit of a pain. So I've been busy with that. So I apologize. Uh, was the ATF, uh, did they like storm in with guns drawn and everything, or were they pretty cool? I mean, it was just like the movies. Yeah, that's what I figured. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I will say, don't try to joke around with them. Like, I was trying to hit on one, and he didn't really, he wasn't really reciprocating. That was awkward. Maybe he was gay? Well, he did have a ring on his finger. But um, <laughs> but then it's funny, because you can't even, like, if you <laughs> offer them water or a bagel... Because you know how I am with my bagels, my bagels and my schmear. So I offered them some bagels and schmear and like they won't, they can't accept anything. They have to, if they, if they take water or something, they have to buy it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But, um, but I'm kind of glad that everything they caught them, they retrieved a lot of the guns back. Um, they haven't told us, uh, all of the details, but I'm pretty sure that they've retrieved all of the guns back. But of course, I don't think we're going to get them for probably a year. Because they're going to, you know, they need it for... Uh, I think they just want to go shoot them for a while and have fun. Yeah. So, you know, they said that they needed it for evidence. But one of the guns, you know, they stole a machine gun, some suppressors. I'm like, I'm not dumb. 
I know you guys are going to, you want to have your fun. They just, they just want to go party. Yeah. yeah. So basically we all need a job with the ATF. Yeah, exactly. Right? I think I'm going to go and apply. Nice. <laughs> the only problem is, is I just have a sense of humor, so I just don't know what to do about that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, if somebody offers you a cookie, you're not going to say no. Right. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <There'll> <laughs> Definitely be not. Ethics violations yeah. every single day. They'll be like, and then, th- then you had a cookie this day and then uh, some ice cream this day. Uh, and can't... then and then the bagel with the locks and the schmear, uh. and I'll be like, well, what do you expect? <laughs> I'm only human, a Jewish human, but human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so anyways, I apologize for that, um, for, for not getting an episode out. Anyway, so I had the opportunity to talk to Cheyenne Dalton, and um, for you guys who are, aren't familiar with who she is, she is 16 years old, she's a really well-known three-gunner. Um, I mean, just extremely talented. Like at one point I asked her, I'm like, is there anything that you don't know how to do? And her response was her sister is really artistic, even though her sister does shoot firearms. Um, her sister's more, you know, into the arts. And she said that that's one thing that she does not know how to do. And, uh, yeah, I didn't really feel bad for her. Exactly. (laughs) Isn't music considered arts? Well, she said she just can't like, she's. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I was like, how many musical instruments do you play? And she's like, 20. <laughs> and you're like, that's cool. I play. Well, I try uh, to play the electric guitar once. <laughs> like one time I almost figured out the CD player in my car. It was glorious. <laughs> All right, here we go. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. All right. So for those who are listening, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? All right. Well, I'm Cheyenne Dalton. I'm 16 years old. I've been shooting competitively for about four years and I also have a bluegrass band. Yeah, that's awesome. I've seen you play. Um, You've posted videos on Instagram where you're playing. You're extremely Mm -hmm. talented, uh, which we'll go into later on, like all of the instruments that you can play. But it's crazy how, you know, how, uh, how good at everything you are. Um, all right. So you are, <laughs> Thank you. you're, you're 16 years old, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And when did mm-hmm. you start shooting? I started shooting when I was about five or six. I started with a Henry 22 lever action rifle. Uh-huh. Um, my dad just asked me if I wanted to go try shooting guns. And so, you know, he taught me how to safely handle the gun and how to shoot it. And then later when I was seven or eight, um, I ended up shooting my first turkey. So that was really oh. cool. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. What would you mm-hmm. say to the parents out there who have younger children, they have guns in the house? What advice could you give them? So I think it's best if kids know um, what you can do with a firearm and how to safely handle them. Or, you know, if they're super, super young, which this should just go without saying, obviously, if there's a gun around, just don't touch it. Um, you know, let the parent handle it. But I definitely think it's best to teach kids how to handle guns safely so that they just don't hurt themselves or anyone around them. Yeah, because there has been a lot of crazy things happening lately. And it's so funny because I don't know what has changed. Um, You know, I I always I actually grew up around guns, even though I only shot my first gun Mm -hmm. five years ago. And my dad, he it's funny because you think that your parents know everything and then you you get older and you look back and you're like, okay, what were my parents thinking? Mm-hmm. Um, but my dad always kept a loaded shotgun right by his bed. And my sister and I always mm-hmm. just knew like, don't go into my parents' room, mm-hmm. don't touch the gun. And now, you know, parents are taking added precaution to make sure that they're storing the guns properly and yet children are still accessing them. So, um, so maybe it, I think, you know, I think that your dad was pretty smart to teach you at a young age and, And I think that when you realize what a firearm can do and you shoot Mm it, it sort of, one, it eliminates that curiosity, but it also shows you what a firearm is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of develop respect for the firearms. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's what's wrong nowadays is maybe there is a lack of respect. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that you didn't want to shoot? No, not really. Um, before I started shooting competitively, some days, you know, we would just take out a few guns and just kind of have like a range day. And it was just always super fun to me. Mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed shooting. It's always been kind of relaxing to me, actually. 
Nice. So, cause you know how they say, you know, if you do something you love, you'll never mm-hmm. work a day in your life. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and that's what I thought would happen. Um, but there are some days, you know, even as an instructor, there's yeah. some days that I'm like, Ugh, you know, do you ever feel like you just don't want to go out and practice? Uh, definitely. But um, I think that's kind of what my dad is for. He kind of acts as my coach and stuff and will kind of push me sometimes if I need it. So yeah, that's awesome. That's good. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, <laughs> it helps for somebody to push you. It's like going to the gym. Um, so your mm-hmm. family, you guys seem really close. Uh, from an outsider's perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like you have like a really nice, like supportive family. I've noticed that your mm-hmm. sister, you and your sister are really close. Yeah, it is pretty true. We're also almost kind of opposites. Like sh- she does shoot with me sometimes when we're doing rimfire, uh-huh. but she enjoys, um, she's very artistic. Um, she can paint and draw and do everything that I cannot do. I'm not artistic at all, <laughs> but um, yeah, we are pretty close, but I think, you know, being homeschooled helps with that because we're usually always together. So mm-hmm. we're just, you know, and who is have it? to be close. <laughs> who, who homeschools you? My mom. She does. Okay. Awesome. How long have you always been homeschooled? Mm-hmm. No, um, I went to a private Christian school until sixth grade. And that's when they pulled me out and started homeschooling me because we started getting really busy with music. And then eventually I started shooting. So I really... I really couldn't go to public school and do what I do. I, mm-hmm. It takes up way too much time. So, And with homeschool, I can do school whenever and wherever I need to. Yeah, definitely. Um, how, does, how does homeschool, like, how does it work? Do they just, is there basically a company that just sends you certain materials and then um, you test from there? Or, I mean, do you have to no. you do so much homework and then they send you tests and you have to meet certain requirements or? Um, I think it kind of depends on each state's laws. Um, mm-hmm. For us, our, you, you know, you get to pick out whatever curriculum you want to use, you know, whatever classes you want to take. Um, you know, at the end, just to get your, an equivalent to a high school diploma, you have to take the GED test. Um, you know, to get in colleges, you just have to take the ACTs. Mm-hmm. So you pretty much can do whatever you want. Um, as long as you can pass the GED and if you want to go to college, then, you know, get a high enough grade on the ACTs. And you mentioned that you're already taking college courses. Um, what college yes. courses are you taking? Um, this semester I'm going to be taking only two just to get me started because I've never been to college or anything before. I'm going to take a speech class and then a, the American sign language class. Wow. Do you know sign language now? I do not, but I've always found it, I've always found it interesting. So uh-huh. I hope maybe I can just since I am interested in it, I can just pick it up really easily. Yeah. Do you, um, have you, do you speak any other languages? Um, I've taken a year of Spanish, but I don't, I can't speak it. (laughs) So you, you play a bunch of musical instruments. What instruments do you play? Mm -hmm. Um, I started playing classical violin when I was four years old. When I was about nine or 10, I decided, you know what, that wasn't very fun anymore. No one ever smiled, and my grandparents, who are kind of in charge of the music side of it, started mm-hmm. freaking out because, you know, I had spent so much time, um, like, perfecting the classical violin. And mm-hmm. I told them, no, I just wanted to do, like, fiddle contests and stuff because people who played fiddly, like, bluegrass kind of music always looked like they were having so much fun on stage. <laughs> and so I started doing that 11 or 12 mm-hmm. and with my little sister. That's awesome. Um, you're right. I never thought about that, but you're you're absolutely right. When somebody plays the violin, they're so serious. Although it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it is. And I still try to break out the old Suzuki classical violin books and you know um, keep brushed up on that because I don't want to lose that mm-hmm. side of it because it's so absolutely. I don't know, it takes a lot of dedication. But in the band, I also play the mandolin and I'm the lead singer. So wow. How did you start your band? Um, well, uh, me and Maddie were always doing twin fiddle stuff, and we found this guy in a town near us who would, he said he would just kind of help us get started. He played guitar. So for a while, it was just me and my sister, and we played twin fiddle, and he played the guitar. And then eventually, we um, found a fiddle teacher, and he played guitar as well. So then he kind of took us on. And then eventually we added a banjo and a bass. And then I switched over to the mandolin so that my sister could play the fiddle full time. And it just started from there. Wow. And where do you play your band? I mean, is it like a um, just like local venues or? 
Um, we do play quite a few local venues. We play at Silver Dollar City. It's an amusement park near us. They have a festival in May called Bluegrass and Barbecue, and some of the best bluegrass bands in the world come there. Um, we have played in North Carolina at the International Bluegrass Music Awards, and in fact, we've been invited back to play there again this year. So we're super wow. excited about that. And we've also played a festival down in Alabama. We basically play all over. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, if anybody was interested in watching you play, where could they find that? Um, you could find us on Facebook. Uh, the name of our band is That Dalton Gang. And you can also find some of our stuff on YouTube. Okay, cool. So you seem to be extremely busy. And I always see you mm -hmm. on social media. So I have to ask, do you run your own social media or, you know, do you, uh, do your parents help you out or did you hire a company to do it? <laughs> Cause I know mm -hmm. keeping up with social media is, it's a job in itself. It's, uh, mm -hmm. extremely time consuming. And I mean, you're always doing something. You're always mm -hmm. very busy. And so I just, I have to ask. Yeah. Um, I do mainly run most of my social media. Occasionally if I get super like swamped with school or music or something, then my dad will kind of jump in and help me. And mm -hmm. he is like the photographer in the family. So he mm -hmm. takes all my pictures. And he helps make, he helps me make videos and all that. But yeah, occasionally he does step in and help me, which I'm extremely grateful for because I could not do all of this by myself. I know. I agree. Um, you definitely have a nice support system. Does your dad, mm -hmm. does he shoot competitively? He has just started shooting three gun, actually. Um, I think he shot two matches with me, so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> nice. How did he do? Um, he's really, really good with pistol, actually. Every time he pulls out his pistol and shoots, everyone's, like, so amazed by it. But that's what he's always shot. Uh -huh. um, I'm still beating him for now, but honestly, I'm getting <laughs> a little bit worried about it. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, um, and he, do you have um, an instructor to work with you, or is it just – you just constantly practice and, you know, and, and grow your talents from there or because, I mean, if you're, if you are a better shot than your dad and he works with you, um, I mean, is there, does, do you finally just kind of hit sort of a, a breaking point where, you know, you're no longer learning as much or um, does that make sense how I, how I worded it? <laughs> yeah, I don't have an instructor. Um, the only lessons I've ever had were when I started shooting rimfire. Uh -huh. I took, two maybe three lessons and then I went up to Iowa and my very first match I won high limited lady but with three gun I don't know there's just no really instructors around here um there are some people some other competitors um who I could go probably take some lessons from but they live up by Kansas City and mm -hmm. I don't know I'm just so busy all the time I do just try to practice and I don't know push myself I try to look at drills that other people do and try and do them myself um, yeah, that's yeah. about it. Do you ever think, so, I mean, obviously if you weren't homeschooled, you've said you would not be able to have accomplished, uh, as much as you have, but do you ever feel like you're like missing out on, you know, like just like a typical childhood? Um, I think I have and I haven't, I have missed out on a lot of the public school baloney that goes on there. Yeah. So actually to me, I look at that as an advantage because mm -hmm. I've seen so much of, you know, the United States and I've, had so many experiences that I don't think I would have gotten if I was in school because I wouldn't be able to leave as much as I have to, to do all mm -hmm. the things that I want to do. Do you have, I mean, do you have quite a few friends or, or is it um, just, I do have a lot of shooting and music friends. The thing is, you know, they could live halfway across the country. So I only see them, you know, yeah. a few times a year. Yeah. Um, I have about one, one or two really close friends here. Even mm -hmm. when I went to the private school, um, you know, I was always leaving to go to like uh, violin lessons and whatnot. And I think kids always looked at me like I was kind of a freak. Maybe they just, I never had really friends in school and I still don't really now Kids, mm -hmm. I think kids just don't really know how to take what I do. Like they just don't understand what I do, but that's okay. I have a lot of adult friends and yeah. And you're extremely mature for your age. Thank you. So, and you'll see once, you know, like I said, you, you couldn't pay me enough to go back to school. So you're really mm -hmm. not, in my opinion, missing out on too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I want you to know that I think I've, I've been a fan of yours for probably the last year when I started getting to uh, Instagram. And I think that what you do is amazing, um, especially just Thank for you. women in the shooting sports. 
Um, and I, and I'm sure that you've encouraged a lot of women and, you know, I mean, obviously that's, that's kind of where the industry is heading now. Like there's a lot more women getting involved, which is awesome. Um, but I'm sure that you had a large role in, you know, you played a role in, in getting women started. How does that make you feel that you are kind of setting, you know, such an example? That's, it's so incredible to me. Like, that's crazy that someone would look at me and think of themselves like, oh, well, if she can do it, then I can do that. And that's awesome because women are a huge part of families and stuff. And Mm -hmm. if we want the shooting sports to keep going, then moms need to be okay with guns and they need to, you know, be okay with, you know, letting their kids, um, you know, learn how to get into the shooting sports. And overall, just women need to get involved in order to keep the two-way community and shooting sports going. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what do you think that we could do to encourage, encourage more women to get um, more involved in the 2A community? Um, I think one thing that would help would be to create more women's shooting leagues. There's a few that I know about, the Austin Sure Shots in Texas and the Bays with Bullets. I think sometimes women might get a little intimidated and all the tactical timmies that are out there mm-hmm. can get in the I way know. sometimes and they just um they don't want to feel stupid or anything but um I think some women really just would prefer to be around other women and learn from other women so I think mm-hmm. that would be a great way to get more women involved definitely um what shooting sports do you actually participate in so you do the three gun mm-hmm. um, I also else? participate in rim fire which is what I started with which is 22 uh, pistol and rifle. It's a speed, obviously. And then USPSA. Which one out of the three is your favorite? I can't really pick a favorite. Uh, Rimfire is fun to me because it's short and fast, and it's mm-hmm. um, how I started. Three gun is a lot of fun uh, because it it's pretty complex. You know, it takes a lot of, like, stage planning. It just, it just takes a lot. And then USPSA is fun to me because it's kind of like three gun but on mm-hmm. a smaller scale because it's just pistol, but yeah. you still kind of have some of the complex stages that you have to plan out. Definitely. So people think that you just go through a stage and you shoot and you switch guns and that's all there is to it. But really um, there is, there's a lot of thought process involved. Mm-hmm. So how do you, what is your thought process when you see a stage for the first time and how do you plan around it? Well, I mean, it really just depends on um, how the stage is laid out. Sometimes there's option targets. So, you have to pick which gun you want to use, but you also have to remember that, you know, the targets, you have to just remember which guns you're going to need for which um, portion of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes it can be kind of challenging. So it's always great if there's some really experienced competitors on your squad, because you can always ask them for advice and, you know, see what they're going to do, or they'll tell you what, you know, they would do if they were you. And it, it just is really helpful to have mm-hmm. people like that on your squad. Or even just somebody to bounce ideas off of to see what would be the most mm-hmm. effective yeah. and time-consuming uh, route to take. Yes. What uh, what firearms do you use for for each of those sports? Okay, for rimfire, I um, use the Volkortsen ultralight rifle, and for the pistol, I use their Scorpion pistol. Um, mm-hmm. For three gun, I use the Breda B12I shotgun. I use the Core Hardcore X1 rifle, and then. For my pistol, I use the STI DVC Limited in 9mm, and I use the same pistol for USPSA. Nice. The uh, the Breda, didn't you just, you recently got that, right? I did, yep. Um, they sent it to me. They wanted uh, a junior to try it out, and I have to say, I am in love with that gun. It's um, so light, and it's super thin, which is great for me because I'm only 5 feet tall. I weigh 110 pounds, so I'm pretty small. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's less recoil in my opinion. It's so much easier for me to control it. I love it so much. Hmm. Yeah. You know, um, have, you know, Dave from, uh, he runs the three gun show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He recently, he was in Colorado and he helped uh Soko three gun host their match. And I, I wanted an opportunity to shoot, but it was just with everything going on. I didn't have a chance mm-hmm. to, but it does. I mean, I was, I was holding it and it is like, it's very lightweight um, mm-hmm. and it, it has been kind of tough to find a shotgun, especially for women, because like I said, we just don't have as much upper body strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you can find something that's lightweight and easy control, mm-hmm. it's just, it makes all the difference. Yeah, definitely. 
do you have any um do you have any favorite guns or any guns that are sentimental to you uh probably the ruger 1022 with the purple wood stock that i started with for rimfire um the that was the gun i first i won my first match with um i won the high lady and then also high junior and also i won the high limited lady world championship that year and then this past year i also won the world championship with that again so that's wow. probably yeah so it's good luck as well <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um so do you do you see do you hope to continue continue the sport for years to come absolutely i'd like to keep shooting um hopefully one day i can make it onto a factory team i really just i want to see how far I can go with this and how many people I can get involved along the way. Definitely. Do you have a role model in the industry? Uh, probably Julie Gollum is my biggest role model. That's mine as well. Mm -hmm. Why is she your role model? Um, she just is so positive all the time. She's so good about helping everyone and, you know, getting women involved in like her love with first shot thing. That's awesome. She just is great. Um, she's just so good with families and, children and women. And I don't know, I think that's awesome. No, I agree. She, uh, she was actually, when I started getting into the sport, she was the first person that caught my attention. And I love mm -hmm. the way that she represents women. Um, because there's, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, if you'll say like gun bunnies in the industry and yep. it is what it is, but I just wish that a lot of the women that were posing with these guns, you know, actually shot the guns. Um, or didn't mm -hmm. use, you know, outfits that were, I guess, I don't know, they didn't look like half naked and use that yeah. to gain, mm -hmm. to gain, uh, likes and stuff. But, but I love the way that Julie yeah. represents herself and, and just women as a whole. And even, I mean, even just the 2A community, you know, I mean, gender aside, she, yeah, absolutely. she, um, she just makes, you know, she makes gun owners look, you know, look great, which I think mm -hmm. we need more of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, typical interview question, where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I am hoping to go to college. I would like to become an optometrist. So I'll probably still be in college in five years, but, um, you know, I want to keep shooting. Like I said earlier, try to get on a factory team. Um, I would, I want to still be playing music. I'd really like to get big in that. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. I just, I don't really know. I'm just going to kind of see. <laughs> Do you have a college in mind that you want to go to? Um, I'd like to start off at College of the Ozarks, uh, down by Branson, kind of. Um, there you work. And instead of pay for your tuition, they have jobs all around the campus. And you just work on campus, and mm -hmm. that pays for it. And then probably like to get my optometry degree, maybe go to Alabama. I think that'd be a cool place. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you, and are you, you're the, um, the oldest child? It's just you and your sister, what? right? You're the oldest, right? It's just, it's you and yes, your sister. I am. How do you think, do you think your parents? And then my be? little brother. Oh, and you have a little brother. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you think, so because you're the first, do you think that your parents are going to be kind of sad if you eventually like leave for college? Um, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, cause um, my little brother's six, so we're 10 years apart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I'll be going to college, he'll just be like starting middle school. So they'll be, so I think they'll, they'll, be they'll be pretty <laughs> occupied. <laughs> yeah. You never know. All right. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me or is there anything that you would like to add before we end the interview? I don't think so, but okay. See you on the wow. range. <laughs> wow. That was a really good interview. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she's, she's definitely really mature for her age. And I felt bad asking her some of the questions because I don't want her to second guess her decisions. Like, being homeschooled or maybe thinking on the sidelines, you know, that maybe she is missing out on a typical childhood. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think, I mean, if I were her parents, I would be extremely proud of everything that she's accomplished. And I don't really think that she's missing out on too much because, you know, just doing all of these competitions, um, she's interacting with a lot of people. Like one thing I will say is, do you remember Lacey when we went to school? And for those who don't know, Lacey and I did go to school together. Yes, we did. But remember when we had to take the tests, there were like standardized tests and people in the district who were homeschooled, they would appear and they yeah. were always so weird and they had like no social skills. Yeah. Like just suddenly they enter the classroom and you're like, who's that kid? And they're completely socially awkward. Yeah, exactly. They, it's like they've never interacted with other students. Exactly. So 
Um, but I don't get that from Cheyenne at all. Like she was really, um, you know, level headed. Yeah, level headed. She had some good social skills. Articulate. Exactly. Very so. talented. But had a personality too, which I think is a bonus. Yeah, I completely agree. Speaking of personality, what's the prank call this week? Oh, so um, considering that, you know, I started the show talking about my dad and how he was robbed, I figured, you know, since he's already down, we might as well just <laughs> give him a little kick. Yeah. I mean, that's how you build character, right? I think so. Yeah. Especially in New York. Yeah, exactly. It's, so. not what, it's not what happens. It's how you deal with what happens. Yeah, I totally agree. You can choose to be a victim or you can just conquer that shit. So we figured we would make him laugh, but I guess that didn't really go as planned. Nope. It's time for Prank Calls with Malcolm and Gertrude. Honey! Any help? Yeah, hello. Uh, I was calling about the museum tour. Okay, it's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Now, I just have to ask, is there all kinds of uh, World War One, World War II? Uh, what all do you have there? That's what we have. Uh, so everything. World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Now, sir, I'm just very curious about one thing. So if it's World War II, is there any Nazi memorabilia? Because I'm very, very yeah, sensitive. Yeah, I have a whole Nazi room, 12,000 oh. square feet. Oh, no, sir. I need to... Uh, can I not go through any of that or see any of that? Because I'm just... It's, I'm so sensitive. I lost, oh, you don't want to see it? I lost uh, so well, much just family. Say it. Tell me in the morning. You don't want to see it, and you can wait outside. And I can just avoid all of it. Yeah, you do whatever you want. Uh, how long does the muse- museum tour take? It takes two hours. Two hours? And uh, yep. if I skip the Nazi, do I get a discount on the price? Yeah, yeah. We'll let you, if you have no money, we'll let you go in free. How's that? You'll let me go in for free? Yeah, yeah. How many of uh, how many people? Yeah, you know, you don't want to pay. That's okay. Everybody else will pay. Oh, they will? Yeah. Don't worry about it. You could go free. That, that's amazing, sir. So I, yeah. I, I can skip the yeah, Nazi. That's great, I can isn't go. It, it is. I, it really yeah, is. Yeah, I, I lay out four thousand, four million dollars, and then you don't want to pay fifteen dollars to see everything. Well, I d- that's okay. I want to see everything, and maybe I just okay. do ten dollars. Okay, we'll and see I don't in the morning. See... Just tell me you don't want to pay, and you don't want to see the Nazi room. And that's going to be totally fine. Oh, I, it's great. I, I yeah. Don't, I, I, Good thing we don't have a lot of people like you, sir. I feel like maybe you might try to. Okay, we'll uh, t- see you. Well, sir, I got work to do, uh, sir. I just real quick. <laughs> 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 and that's how I was never allowed to go to Dragon Man's again. <laughs> wow. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I honestly thought that the next time I went in there, he was going to murder me. Uh, but I, I'm surprised you're sitting here with us I, I'm now. actually surprised, too. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so it was good. Uh, as lo- one day, I'll be in there, and I'll be, like, paying to go use the range or something, and I'll be like, oh, okay, thank you very much, and he'll just punch me directly in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's great. So, <laughs> sorry, I thought that was very amusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so funny cuz he like I think also being in that industry and like dealing with people cuz I help him. I've been helping him uh this summer like on weekends, mostly Sundays, and just working behind the counter and like some of the questions that people ask, it's exhausting. Like I cannot I'm not very great with customer service, but it it really wears on you. So, like I can't even blame him for you know, wait. So you mean that you're just not patient and polite? No, believe it or not. <laughs> uh-uh, wow, not Ava. I did. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> learn something new every day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and just so we don't get a lot, you know, we don't get a lot of slack for it. We actually we recorded this a few weeks ago, so I did not decide to prank call him while everything else was going on. But um, and if you guys have not seen his museum, it's incredible. I forget how big it is, but it's huge and it does cover everything from. World War One to present, um, we've had people, you know, come from out of the country and they've traveled all over the place and seen other museums. And everyone always says that his museum's definitely the best and it has the most artifacts in it. So I definitely encourage uh, you guys to see it. Just don't ask for a discount. It's $15. Yeah. If you have a problem with the Nazi portion, hey, that's you, and uh, you don't get a discount for it. Yeah, and look, he laid out $4 million. You can fucking pay 15 Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, excellent. All right. Tacti Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. So we uh, our our gear chat today is about a company called Medi- Medieval Industries, and they actually sent Sean and I both um, 
it's a vertical foregrip, but it can actually, you can Mm -hmm. rotate it 360 degrees. And Sean has his, uh, tell us, tell us about it a little bit, Sean. So this is actually, I mean, it is a vertical foregrip, but basically you can unscrew it, which releases some pressure on the joint and then you can have it however you want. So whatever you want, whatever direction, whatever angle, you could have it out to the side if you want to be a baller. Um, and it's just actually kind of cool. So not a huge uh, angle to foregrip or foregrip kind of guy. Don't use them very much. I know a lot of military guys do just because that's what you guys, you know, that's what you did in the service. So that's kind of what you do now. But I know a ton of people like uh, vertical foregrips, and this is actually quite a good one. And uh, honestly, I, I think that it's a pretty clever design. It seems to work pretty well. Just pop it loose, tighten it back up. Seems pretty good. I was jamming it against the table earlier, and uh, the table's all messed up now, but it didn't move, and it seems pretty solid. So I like it. And the gun is totally fine. And the gun's totally fine. And so is the grip, so. Yeah. Uh, Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, they're they're not perfect, but they're good. (laughs) So, yeah, I I do like it. Medieval Industries, um, relatively inexpensive, not too bad at all. And, uh, you know, it comes with the Allen key that you need to put it on, which I think is always a great thing. Add the tool, use the tool, and uh, pop it right on. And everything is stored inside that grip. Yeah. So you just screw the bottom and the little key comes out. Yep. And so that if you wanted to place it on your rail. If you wanted to put gummy bears in there, that's also an option. <laughs> well, okay, that's what I was going to do. Yep. Swedish fish, you could do that as well. Cookies. Ava, don't put ice cream in there. Oh, gosh. Did you hear about our coffee party the other day? No. So I invited Lacey over for coffee. And I mean, it was kind of spur of the moment. And she comes over and I realize I only had a few drops of cream. So being the best friend that she is, she let me put the last drops of cream into my coffee. Nice. And she said, as long as I have sugar, she'll be fine. And I thought I had sugar, but it turns out I did not have sugar. So I, um, you know, I I looked in my cabinets and I had a bunch of sprinkles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have all the sprinkles, every color. (laughs) So I just gave her some sprinkles to put in her coffee. And uh, and I figured, you know, like right now, those unicorn frappuccinos, those are trending. So as far as I'm concerned, like... You hooked her up with a trending thing. I, yeah, exactly. Right. Like I did that girl a favor. Right? I had a unicorn coffee without paying Starbucks prices. Exactly. It was free. And my cup looked like a unicorn was in it. Exactly. Actually, it did. Um, and then washing that, trying to wash all the different colors sprinkles. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Just really hot water and just try to forget that, that ever happened. I yeah. think is the key. Actually, when I say wash, I mean like rinse it off and put it in my dishwasher. But hey, what's so, their, what's their website? I forgot. It is uh, mid hyphen evil dot com. Gotcha. So that's not like fully evil or just kind of evil. It's just mid evil. Just a little. <laughs> just a little evil. And it is. It's pretty cool. So if you guys are interested in getting one of those, you can go on their website. Um, and it is cool. It's you could literally adjust it. All of these different, you know, as they say, three sixty. Yeah. So. Completely, 100%. Definitely. All right. What's next? What's next on our list? Come on, Sean. What? Where? How much? Listener submitted advertisements. Because everyone deserves a first look. So, what is on the list this week? I don't even know. Well, that's because they didn't include you Um, in the shipment. Yeah. Well, okay, here's the thing. Well, then I don't want to talk about it. Whatever, but you know what? They honestly, like, they don't have your size. I asked them if they had 4XL, Mm -hmm. and they don't. Mm -hmm. So that's why you weren't included. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm sure if they had it, they would have sent Mm -hmm. it to you. Is this this where you want to be when Jesus comes? Yeah. Okay. Wearing this shirt. (laughs) Wearing this shirt, because I look sexy AF. So this is what you want to be doing. This is how you want to be talking to people when Jesus comes. Yeah, I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> right. She's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they don't have size. I mean, cover. at least I, you know, I got my hair and my makeup done and I'm wearing this really cute shirt. And I just, yeah, I, I don't understand what the problem is. Moving on. <laughs> so Lacey and I are, are wearing these shirts. Lacey, tell us about the shirt you're wearing. Um, So my shirt says Rosie the Operator. And what is my shirt? What does my shirt say? Your shirt says you had me at pew. Which, I mean, yeah, if you pew, hello. (laughs) And so what's really awesome about this company is that they donate to charities for everything that you buy through this company. That's cool. Yeah. Um, They donate to Project 22, which is a great charity um, for veterans. They also have this shirt that they sent me. Maybe this was supposed to be Sean's shirt. 
I mean, I did say there's three people, but I mean, let's face it, this would only fit his arm. Maybe yeah. if we. But I was going to say maybe if made. we cut his arm off. I was like, oh, fit. because of my guns? Is that you what mean both about? arms off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> but they have so also I was looking at their website. They have freaking awesome shirts and tank tops. They have a tank top that says gun bunny and there's a little bunny rabbit on it. Yeah. And it's holding a gun. They have And I'm like, why didn't they send me that shirt? <laughs> like seriously, I'm about to go on their website after the show and order everything that's on on this website. Nice. Um they also have a charity for Officer Keith Boyer. Um, they're selling a T-shirt in his name, and um, all of the T-shirts that are bought in his name, that full amount goes to the charity for Officer Keith Boyer, as well as um, police officers that are still serving. Wow. Pretty cool. And then how much do these shirts range from? It's 1995, I think, or 1999. Somewhere between 15 and $30, I That's think. No, it it's not. It's not 50 Hang on. <laughs> it literally, every shirt that I saw in there was like mm-hmm. $19.95. Oh, well, I'm sure that is the case. But, but I mean, if you're a 4XL, yeah, you you're probably going to have fabric. to, you're probably going to be $30. <laughs> exactly. And I need something that wicks sweat away from my skin because I can't have any more pressure sores. Hang on, sores. let's see what it says under. All right, so all of the lady shirts are pulling it up. I wish the internet worked a little quicker here. <laughs> That's 1995. Great. It looks yep, like across the board, 1995. What about the men's shirts? Click on the men's. Yeah, real quick. let's check that out. Because sometimes men's t-shirts are a little bit. They're cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, usually. Yeah, I don't know why because they're usually more fabric, but I don't. I think the quality isn't as nice. Like this is such a nice shirt. Yeah, it's pretty and, soft. And dudes don't care. We're like, know. comfortable. We'll just I know. You see, I hope you realize. Like, I just let you borrow that shirt for the show, but I'm going to need it back. So now I have to order my own. Just say no. I mean, probably, but it, it's okay. it's going to a good cause. It's just okay. no. I like the American made one better anyway. Oh yeah, well so. that's mine as well. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna order one of those. Okay, <laughs> we could be twinsies. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> and Sean, you can't even order yours. I mean, that, no, I don't know. Maybe cool. they might make them for um for, for XL for big boned people. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm not big boned. <laughs> I'm just fat. It's okay. We don't have to. We don't have to uh, say what. Whatever. I don't even want to talk right now. Well, they have kids. Okay, that's great. But do they have the four XL? That's all I care about. All right. Let me check here. All right. So I'm going to give you guys the play by play. So she's looking on the phone, not her phone. So she's a little <laughs> bit unfamiliar with it. But guys, I think she's going to be able to take this all the way. Uh, she's so right now. I'm just I'm just waiting so no, on this high speed internet that you paid for. No, mm. here's what happened. Here's what happened. Um, my husband decided to call in because I'm pretty sure that he's about to pick up my kid. So he just tried to call in, and so my internet just completely glitched as I was trying to look at prices for men's shirts. Well, thank you. Thank you for not blaming it on my internet that I pay a lot of money for. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Appreciate you, Lacey. You're welcome, Sean. And I still think your panties are in a bunch. Well, I'm not even wearing panties right now. Well, nobody's calling my phone right now. Oh yeah, so some of them actually. I see one one shirt is fourteen ninety five. Actually, cheaper. The rest are nineteen ninety five. Let's click on this and see. Oh, there's one that's twenty ninety five. All right, let's see what size these come in. Oh wow, so they go all the way up to three XL. So that's why they couldn't send you one. Oh yeah, well you know better luck next time, right? I'm sure that I can... maybe after this they might change their policy. Yeah. And... Well, look, here's the thing: is I can just go buy shirts at Walmart and they go all the way up to like 25 XL, so it's not going to be a big deal at all. Yeah. And I could probably get a cool little saying like uh, "I didn't get fat on purpose; it happened happened by snack accident." Like yeah, something like that. Because <laughs> yeah. I really want to represent my personality as well as my five XL. Make t-shirt. sure that you um, open carry too when you go to Walmart and Always. you have your butt crack sticking out. Always. I, that that's the only way I shop. Yeah, without the pants. Yeah, it's really kind of weird at Target, but at Walmart, I fit in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I guess that wraps up this show. Um, I want to say thanks to everyone who was uh, who wat- who was listening to the show. And let's see. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to pull up my show notes. Just start that part all over again. All right, guys. So I wanted to I wanted to thank everyone for listening to the show. Um, If you guys want to find us on social media, you can go on Facebook and it's Gun Funny Show or Instagram is also Gun Funny Show. We're also on uh, YouTube. And uh, if anybody wants to find you, Sean, where can they find you? They can usually find me at Walmart wearing a 5XL (laughs) t-shirt with a cool little quirky saying that represents my personality, open carrying with my butt crack out. So just find me there or you can find me at We Like Shooting or the Firearms Radio Network. Awesome. 
We that out. wraps that up. We out. We're going to go finish drinking our case of the Rockies. Oh, it's so delicious. Want to send feedback? Suggest a place to prank call? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.